Bickley and Murata. Bickley and Murata mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bickley Blast. The Cardinals and the Sun Devils apparently have the same issues. Neither one cheats very well, and both are dealing with dysfunction from the past that is currently infecting their present all over again, effectively penalizing the innocent. For the Cardinals, it's the allegations of using burner phones to circumvent their own internal suspension of former general manager Steve Keim. The story has been reset because of Steve Wilkes' testimony which the Cardinals did not refute. They merely called it inadmissible. Now, I don't think very much of Wilkes as a head coach, but I know he's a stand-up guy, and the Cardinals better be real careful suggesting otherwise. And I really don't think much of Steve Keim as a GM either, a man who drove this team into the ditch with his lack of professionalism, yet stayed in power because he coddled up to and enabled a hands-on owner. Fortunately, the Cardinals seem to have found the antidote in their new GM, and hopefully Bidwell has learned a few lessons as well. He might even vow to fade into the background after this burner phone controversy, possibly mitigating any more damage. But the hope is that the NFL doesn't turn on the Cardinals now and take back some of the picks that Austin Ford has so deftly acquired. That would be a really bad deal to penalize the Cardinals when they finally have a GM who knows what to do, who to select, and how not to waste draft capital and this whole rebuilding process too i mean that's what you have to hope for there's going to be some sort of penalty some sort it just i would seems think like it at this point of the fine? story how about a fine how about a fine how about, how about a fine? Uh, levying a penalty against those that are the actual mm-hmm. you know the the actual guilty right and this idea of i think it was kellen olsen who actually tweeted about it last night you know a 10-year run where you know last week when when you were gone and after the trade of Isaiah Simmons, Tim Ring and I kind of picked apart the the 10-year first-round draft pick history of Steve Keim. Mm-hmm. And now he's gone, and he still might have an effect on, uh, on, on draft on, picks. On bad drafting, at least, right. Uh, no, it, that's somewhat directly. That's exactly right. Now, another thing happened yesterday that was absolutely hysterical. Somebody invited Steve Keim to speak to Arizona's football team. <laughs> I'm, and- I'm hoping he just showed up. Yeah, yeah, burst just through the like, doors hey, hey, and they guys. couldn't get him out. And so they put it on social media, and the ID to him is Stephen Kime. I've never seen that. Stephen Kime. Yeah. May- maybe a new re- moniker, perhaps. Rebranding. Re- yeah. <laughs> right. Rebranding. And then, and then they used a quote that Steve Kime used in that, and it, apparently the tweet got ratioed so bad they had to delete it. Is that what happened? Yes. Yeah, there were yeah. like 70-plus quote yeah. tweets of people just dogging him mm-hmm. yeah. and him. Well, timing is a thing. Yeah. It wasn't the greatest timing when this story breaks. No. Well, uh, clearly it, things got the, – the, the wheels came off of Steve Keim and, and, yeah. his, and his leadership of the Cardinals pretty fast and hard. And to the point where people – a lot of people say they didn't see much of him in that last season at all. And that was before he took his leave of absence. So, I, again, I, it's, it, you don't want Monty Austin for it to have to pay the price for this. So, so I just – I hope that if nothing else, it's – and, again, the arbiter hasn't ruled. He hasn't ruled a thing. Uh, I've been told by legal people that, that cross-examining is common in depositions. Okay. I, I I've was never, not aware. Yeah, and, again, I, just, I was pleading ignorant. I wasn't stating otherwise. Yeah, I've avoided a lot of legal issues in my life, knock on wood. Yeah, so right, <laughs> right. And so, so I think that in, in this particular case – um, it, it's going to be how the NFL chooses to look at this because it, the, the Cardinals effectively waived the NFL off of any punishment after Steve Kimes' extreme DUI by saying, we got this. We're going to hit him harder than you would, so we got this. And the fine was substantial, and so was the suspension. Um, according to Steve Wilkes' testimony, at, at the very beginning, Michael Bidwill told them, this according to Steve Wilkes, have no communications with him. Mm -hmm. And then shortly thereafter, that had changed. Now, I don't know why the team thought they couldn't get through an offseason without Steve Keim. Um, I know they were coming off the last year of Bruce Arians at the time, and there was a David Johnson contract to get done. Yes. Um, And I remember having those discussions in real time during mm -hmm. the suspension about the timing of the announcement of that contract extension for David Johnson. Like, wow, they're doing this without Steve Keim in the Mm -hmm. loop. Uh, naive us. Well, I also, I I remember, and I'm sure other media members in the market do as well, there were any number of little kind of wink-wink 
statements after Steve Keim returned that then let people know he had never really left. And you know what? And I don't know who said this, but you're right. Let's not be Pollyanna. In many situations like this, there are there are communications. Like when managers get thrown out of the game, you think managers don't. Sometimes they go on, put uh, glasses and a mustache, mustache on, on, and like a Bobby different hat. That, was right. <laughs> that was fantastic, wasn't it? So, so it's not like the Cardinals, you know, invented this this scheme or whatever, whatever this thing happens to turn out to be. And 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 Michael Bidwell's stance on this is that he was not involved; that he was the one that shut it down, which Steve Wilkes um, said isn't the case. So I don't know where this whole thing is going to go. Um, but but I do know that there was a lot of dysfunction that bubbled up uh, from internal affairs with this football team at the end of last year. Mm-hmm. And and you don't want it to get in the way of this year's team. Some of it's going to be inevitable. Yeah, apparently some of it is. There's one unanswered question in all of this. Mm-hmm. Because you mentioned it earlier in the show. Kyle Odegaard, who worked for the Cardinals for a long time, actually posted on X yesterday screenshots of the alleged burner phones. Mm-hmm. And one question that's out there, we don't have an answer to. Is there any word on Kim Dietschy? <laughs> August 17th, uh-huh. 2018. Uh-huh. And will they buy more data? We're running out <laughs> right, of data. That's right. That, the screenshots have that, yes. And there's a dust storm coming. Uh, and it's effect, in effect until 6.45 wow. p.m. Wow, wow. <laughs> At least they got a haboob then. Sheesh. Funny. Yeah, so again, you know, I, I haven't dived into the research very far, but yeah. well, I'm and, wondering what, what precedent is and, and how the NFL has ruled. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. And to what, whatever extent the burner phone was implemented, no matter how far it's reached, we'll just call it a spectacular failure because the Cardinals won three games that year and signed David Johnson to an expensive contract during that time because of the burner phones. Mm-hmm. So nothing good came of it. No. Let that be a lesson to you kids out there. That's right. Follow the rules, kids. (laughs) Follow the rules, kids.